Welcome back to the Evolve Sales Leader, recorded live right here on LinkedIn every Friday. I'm Jonathan Fisher, your host. One of the hottest topics in business today is artificial intelligence or AI. What is this technology capable of and how can we effectively apply it to business development and sales today? Well, here to discuss that with us today is Colin Mitchell. Colin is head of sales at the fast-growing tech company, Humantech.ai, and he's built a significant online presence as a thought leader in sales, offering insights for better go-to-market strategies, especially for founders, via his newsletter, the Sales Transformation Newsletter. Colin, it's fantastic to have you on the show today. Welcome. Yeah, I've been looking forward to it. Thanks for having me on the show. This is a hot topic that I love talking about, so I know we're going to have a lot of fun and Hopefully we get some good questions too. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to have a great conversation and a friendly reminder to the audience. It's a live show for good reason. So start posting your questions in chat. We will have a Q&A at the end. And on the course of our conversation today, we're going to be exploring the implications of AI for doing business in the years to come. We're going to talk about some of the powerful ways that you can leverage this technology for better sales results, including some specific tools you can use and action steps you can take right away to grow your pipeline, close more deals. Uh, Colin, that's a promise we're making. Are we going to keep that today, brother? We are going to do our best. And if not, maybe the AI will jump in and do it for us. <laughs> nice one. I love it. I love it. <laughs> we'll call it uh, real quick, just by way of introduction, share briefly, what do you do there at Humantic.ai? Yeah. So I'm the head of sales at Humantic uh, AI, where we help sales teams personalize the entire sales process using obviously AI. Um, so I have the pleasure of, of helping sales teams uh, increase their positive reply rates, increase their first time engagement, increase their close rates uh, by leveraging the uh, personality insights that Humantic AI provides them. Well, sounds like we have the right guy to talk to today. So that's a good deal. So uh, AI, it is a hot topic. As I mentioned, uh, a lot of conversation about what are the implications of this thing? I mean, some folks are even kind of getting a little bit alarmist about it, perhaps. Like, is this going to take over our jobs? And mm. is it going to put people out of work across a whole range, whether it's tech people or salespeople? What, what are the implications of artificial intelligence as you see it? Yeah, I think that there is a lot of people that are of that, you know, camp of being scared of it, right? Thinking that it's going to replace their jobs or do their jobs better than they can do it. And you know, with some good reason, you know, AI is still, um, you know, it's maturing at a very fast pace. So where AI is today versus where it was six months or even a year ago are, are vastly different. And then, you know, recently when, you know, things like chat GPT-3 came out and, you know, made a lot of noise and went to like a million users in a couple of days um, and people really started freaking out and you saw a lot of uh, people on socialist, you know, really just sort of saying it's not good, doesn't work, you know, all of these things. Um, and, and, and part of it is not knowing how to properly use it uh, to your benefit as a seller. And the reality is, is it's here, it's here to stay and it's only going to get better. So sales teams really need to start to look at how do we embrace this? How do we integrate it into what we do so that we can be more productive, so that we can be more efficient, and so we can do our jobs better. So is it fair to say that your view is that this is not a threat, but rather a new tool that we can leverage if we do so effectively? Yeah, I mean, especially with the current market conditions, right? We all know that you know the stock market's down, there's layoffs all the time. Um, I mean, there's just a lot going on where there's a, you know immense amount of financial insecurity. And ultimately what that means for a lot of sales organizations today is they're trying to figure out how do we do more with less. Um, mm. and, and AI is a great thing that can help your already you know, trained team uh, be more productive in a lot of ways or you know, uh, help do things that they're required to do that they typically don't like doing, mm. um, that they bring their own bias into um, which could be, you know, messaging or writing copy or building lists or, you know, mundane CRM tasks. These are all things that there's AI tools available today to help solve for. Um, and if you have a, you know, sales team, you want your sales team focused on what, you know, I call revenue generating activities. That's having conversations 
with potential customers, current customers to maybe expand deals. And the more time that they can spend doing those things and leverage the power of AI to do a lot of these other things for them, then they can be really high performing. So, and there, there really is, there, there's a lot of, uh, conversation out there about to what extent the buyer even wants human interaction. That's a big mm. part of the conversation, isn't it? Like if you're, if you're the founder, you, you know, some people are even talking about maybe I, I don't want that much human interaction involved. If that's what the buyer wants, I really, I want this technology to go all the way. Let's come at it from that side. Like what are, what are some of the advantages of pushing it to the limit on the technology side? Yeah. I mean, I don't think that it, it highly depends on what it is that you sell. Like, you know, people are making bigger purchases these days now, like fully digital without any interaction, right? And we're mm. already seeing that happen. Mm. Um, even, you know, people buying cars, you know, online <laughs> from an app before mm. they've ever even driven them, right? Like crazy yeah. uh, to think that that's kind of where we're at uh, today, where, yeah. you know, the buying experience of just a car was very different prior to that. So, mm. And also with, you know, sort of, let's say the younger generation of people, um, a lot of them would prefer text messages or not to get on the phone or not have as much human interaction. So I think that it's not going to completely go away. Um, and I think it also highly depends on what it is that you sell, you know, how complex that is, how consultative you need to be in that interaction um, where there's always still going to be a need for, you know, a human being to be part of that. Yeah. Do, do you think that maybe even like transaction size, uh, and maybe how many share, you know, shareholders are involved in the decision? Does that, does it all play into that as well? Would you say? Yeah, absolutely. I'd say, you know, if it's a highly transactional thing, um, then people would rather just buy now, right. And not have to deal with, um, a salesperson and for good reason, because there's a lot of people that, don't do sales the right way. And, you know, you, you, you typically hear about the, the sleazy salesperson or the pushy salesperson. And a lot of people don't want to deal with that um, for a good reason. And so there's a lot of things that they would rather just purchase without dealing with a salesperson if they could. Uh, and But the, the bigger that the transaction comes, the more complex the solution is uh, and the more people involved in that decision, uh, there's always going to need to be human interaction there. Okay, so let's go back to the other side. Your your contention is this is a powerful tool we can leverage. And in fact, if anything, it should be a time saver allowing the true professional in sales do what she is most productive in doing, having conversations, actually getting, you know, exploring uh, the opportunity and see if she can close that deal for her company. So why don't we start with this? What are some of those kind of rote activities that sales folks don't like doing uh, that go on our list of things that this technology could come in and help us with. Yeah, I mean, let's. There's a, there's a, there's a few of them, right? But let's 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 tackle the most obvious one: uh, CRM tasks, CRM <laughs> tasks, and you know, every yeah. sales leader out there um, has dealt with their fair share uh, of salespeople that just won't continuously update the CRM properly. It's a huge problem. <laughs> yeah. And so, There was a period after each one of those phrases, I yeah. noticed the way you said that. And, and yeah. that, I, I'm with you. Yeah. 100%. You just, just really want to, you know, drive that one home just, just a little bit because it's a, <laughs> it's a pain. It's a real yeah. pain because nobody wants to be a micromanager type sales leader breathing down the neck of their sales team to just update the, the CRM, right? There's just mm. way better things that the sales leader and the sellers can be spending their time doing. Uh, but it's a very important piece, right? If you're running any uh, sizable, you know, it's even a small or sales organization, but more relevant, um, uh, even in, in larger sales organizations, like we've got to be making decisions based on data. And if the CRM is not totally accurate as it should be, well, then we can't make good decisions, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's why it's a really, really important piece. But there's tools, there's tons of tools out there that will, you know, use AI to automatically uh, update Salesforce, HubSpot, whatever CRM that you use uh, so that the salesperson doesn't have to. Okay, nice. Yeah, I mean, it, it's interesting because I do think that there may be a correlation between the kind of person who's great at selling 
and that that person might not be great at updating the details anyway, right? A lot of a lot of time, and this is maybe some folks will argue with me on this, but I do think there's a correlation there. The personality that can be in the moment, be very personable, they're so engaged with the conversation, those details do feel like a hindrance. What a great lifesaver it could be to have this handled for you. Like so, so what's that look like? Are there plugins that can that can work with some of the big name CRMs that are out there? They've, they've already got the APIs in place, or like how do we practically apply that? Yeah, I mean, there's there's a bunch of them, right? Tools like um, Dooley or Rattle. I mean, there, there's a bunch. Um, you know, Dooley is probably one of the more you know well known ones, and and there's quite a few others. Um, you, you know, they can automatically update things for you. Uh, work directly in your messaging app or, you know, update things. Uh, Scratchpad is another one. I mean, there's just, you know, these tools that, you know, live in other places that'll, all, you know, update the CRM for you, um, you know, based on things that are happening. So uh, I think that it, it, it is uh, a, a huge pain point where I think it makes a lot of sense, you know, and you can get some huge productivity gains for your sales team in order to, you know, get them focusing on the things that are going to drive more revenue. All right. So number one thing AI can actually do for the sales pro is CRM tasks. What else? Oh, all right. So, uh, let's see the, 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 the next one would be, you know, list building, right? Mm. List building. Mm. Um, you know, I think most people, most mature, uh, sales organizations, um, you know, don't have a person uh, researching their leads. M maybe they do if they're doing some, you know, really, maybe they have some really tough, you know, targets or, or they need some additional like personalization and research information. Um, but there's a ton of tools like Seamless and Zoom Info and um, Sales Intel and Cognizant and all these tools uh, that use, you know, AI to go out there and find relevant contact information uh, about your buyers. You know, that could be as simple as title, company information, revenue size, technology that's uses, even intent data, like have these, you know, are these particular contacts in market for the solution that I sell? Um, so I'd say that's a, that's a big one uh, where, you know, most teams are using something like that. Now, in, in those cases, you know, I'm, I mentioned a lot of, you know, different options there. Um, they're not all perfect. I see a lot of sales organizations today using like, potentially two, sometimes even three of those to get full coverage uh, of what they actually need. So that all makes a lot of sense. Now, when it comes to some of these uh, 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 vendors of like lists and other insights into contact data, it, I often hear skeptics <laughs> in sales saying, I can just go to LinkedIn or I can just Google around. Like, do you feel that that intent data, are you seeing evidence that that stuff is on point? It has a lot of value. What, what's your opinion on that, that part of it? Yeah, I, um, it's not, you know, I, I mean, any, do you really want, if you're a sales rep, like, do you really want to be going out there trying to, you know, use your time to figure that stuff out on your own? Uh, I would say no. Right. But, hmm. uh, you know, let's say maybe you're on a tight budget cause you know, some of these tools are not cheap. Uh, hmm. it maybe makes sense in that case, or maybe you have, you know, let's say you don't want to go the route of using AI for your list building, well, then you should at least have like a dedicated researcher or somebody that, you know, some sort of analyst that builds these lists for you because salespeople should not be spending their time building lists. And unfortunately, uh, you still see that today. There is a lot of sales teams that just kind of have a free for all of, you know, building their own lists. And there's just better things that their time could be spent on than building lists. I say, let the AI do it for you. Yeah. If you're not going to go that route, at least have a dedicated, maybe more junior person that does those sort of tasks. Yeah. Or maybe even enablement people could take that on as part of their task, perhaps, if you have an enabled, yeah. to have that in your structure. Um, when it comes to these choosing among these different applications, do you think it's really important that they have a good integration with LinkedIn? How key would that be in your view? Yeah. I mean, if you're selling into B2B, LinkedIn is the, you know, at the core of probably most everything that you would do, hopefully, mm -hmm. um, you know, social selling is becoming, you know, more and more part of a sales strategy, uh, that we are seeing, you know, work very effectively in, in a lot of different ways, which mm -hmm. is a whole nother rabbit hole that we could, we could go down. Um, but yeah, I think that a lot of there, you see a lot of tools, um, that are working off of LinkedIn, uh, or, 
uh, LinkedIn is part of how uh, the solution does work, right? So like perfect example, uh, a lot of the list building tools, um, you know, they're starting with LinkedIn as sort of the the centerpiece uh, to then get you the information that's available uh, online from that particular person. So LinkedIn is a good source to tie back to, you know, hey, this is this particular person. And then what can we find on this person? We can't hear you. Uh, and yeah, I agree with that uh, for better or for worse. And I think it's mostly for better. You know, LinkedIn really is a great starting point, uh, for all of those activities. That's where all the business people are. There's, there are more, more users of LinkedIn than there are citizens in the United States. So that should tell you it, <laughs> it's, it's a, it's a good place to be. Is that a, is that a, is that a real fact from a human yeah. or from AI? Ah, that's a good question. <laughs> I'll check on that and get back to you. <laughs> While I'm checking on that, I want to mention, speaking of really great tools that every business development leader owes it to him or herself to know about, and that is Overpass. We're very proudly powered by the Overpass platform. Those are fantastic people, Overpass.com. They know how to integrate great technology <coughs> with fantastic people. What do they do? They help you get talent to fill your team very quickly. Highly qualified reps to be SDRs, AEs, whatever you need to grow quickly, especially if you're tech, especially if you are funded, this is your platform. Check them out. You can create a free account at overpass.com. One more mention as well, Overpass is sponsoring a really great event that's going to follow up today's conversation on AI. It's going to be coming up here soon on January the 19th from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. There's going to be a panel of 12 different business experts discussing the topic. Keep an eye on the overpass.com LinkedIn page for more information information on that event. All right. So, I mean, AI, it is an interesting thing. It's, it's a little bit, it's got a little bit of a sexy factor to it. If I, if I can say that though, too, right. It's kind of a cool thing. So I think a lot of folks want to embrace it. Um, are there some key ways that we can actually get into that? I want, I'm going to circle back to that question in a minute. Like what are, what, if you're an individual producer, uh, maybe we can circle back and talk about what are some of the immediate ways that an individual can get, uh, Get some leverage using this technology because, as we all know, you know decisions are made in various ways in various companies, right? So let's give an edge to that producer at the end, and then while we're at it, let's give an edge to the leader that's listening because this is all about evolved sales leaders. But let's fit, first let's finish, uh, finish our list. We've got CRM tasks, we got list building. Give us a uh, next. What's the next one on uh, your list of things AI can do? Yeah, so I would say my next favorite, and this is relevant for both individual contributors and extremely relevant for sales leaders would be conversational intelligence. So actually taking your sales calls um, and putting them into a, a tool like a gong or wingman or chorus where you can um, analyze those calls and look for certain things and also coach your reps on the things that they might need the most help with. Another really powerful use case of using a tool like that um, is also reviewing back to it, uh, you know, for, you know, next steps and making sure uh, that you, you know, properly qualified through your discovery call or you didn't miss anything or any details um, that you need for next steps. So conversational uh, intelligence with a tool like Gong or Chorus or Wingman um, is a really powerful use of AI. You're on mute. You're on mute. Oh, sorry about that. Thank you. I'm dealing with some congestion, so I'm hitting that, that button I never used to. Um, <laughs> <laughs> little operator error there. Sorry, audience. But um, so what, what, what you're saying there is that literally I could take the recording and plug it through. There must be an add-on if it's gone or whatever the solution might be. And without me having to sit and listen to it, it's going to pick up some things, whether they were done well or not, according to criteria that I can set. Is that, is that close to correct? Yeah. So a couple things, uh, few, you know, there's a few different solutions out there that work slightly differently and, and maybe have some feature sets over other ones. So uh, I've even seen this now where it can happen live. So there's a solution called Trellis, uh, which uses AI when, you know, your sales team is making cold calls and gives you uh, coaching uh, in real time uh, based on uh, that cold call. And then we have solutions like wingman, which, you know, shows up to your zoom calls, 
um, shows up to even your, your regular calls that you might be making um, from any sort of like telephony solution, uh, records those, transcribes them, um, even can give you real-time feedback as well. So maybe there's particular things that come up in conversations that can identify um, some areas where it could cause a deal to get stuck or need authority um, and can also give you, you know, sort of, you know, uh, feedback on how to structure that call properly in real time. But then the great use case is then being able to refu review those and go back to it um, and also rate those calls. You know, another great feature that all of these solutions have is also seeing how much you're talking versus how much your prospect is talking um, because that's something really important uh, to pay attention to. Am I just pitching at my prospect constantly um, or am I asking good questions and learning good information on that call, which is typically going to result in a more sound discovery call that took place? Well, that's pretty amazing. That sounds extremely helpful for the manager that wants to make sure the team is operating as they should. And it's especially, you know, there, there's this old uh, notion of, they used to call it the sophomore slump, right? You get a team ramped up, they're performing well, the numbers are hitting, and give it about 90 days, and they typically hit a slump somewhere around that zone, right? Maybe by engaging with these tools, we can either avoid that, or we'll f figure out exactly why it's happening, and maybe maybe keep that valley from getting so deep, right? And, and keep them performing where they should. Yeah, I mean, it helps you really identify who on your team needs help in very specific areas, right? Just because somebody maybe isn't getting a lot of sales calls from first call to second call um, doesn't necessarily mean that they stink at discovery. It might just mean that there's one particular thing that they're missing. And with the power of AI and these tools, you can really zoom in on that stuff and focus on that particular area that they need help with rather than just thinking, hey, they stink at discovery. Yeah. Amen. So, um, is there, is there another area where AI can really assist the sales professional? Well, I would say we're seeing a lot of, you know, talk about chat GPT three, um, and a lot of these tools that are helping you know, write personalization, um, you know, a little selfish plug, a little, you know, is, is what we're doing at Humantic, um, it, which is providing personality insights based on the digital footprint uh, of your prospects. So based on the digital footprint of your prospect, um, you know, Humantic AI can give you the personality type of that person and then give you insights into, you know, what a winning strategy would be with them or sales landmines or traps to avoid or what their communication styles and preferences are. So we're giving people people graphics, the, you know, uh, you hear a lot of these data products give you like techno graphics and all these other things, but we give you people graphics into your prospects. Uh, to personalize the way that you sell so that you can sell the way your buyers want to buy. Sounds really powerful. So it, it, is this, uh, has this been affected by some of the recent changes in Google where, you know, your ability to put a pixel here and there is maybe a little different today than it was last year. Um, has that been a, a, a sort of a, so, a, an area for the yeah, technology? Yeah, so there's to, definitely, to yeah, there's definitely some marketing use cases. Um, at the moment, we're pretty focused on like the sales segment and how, people can leverage this. So there's really two ways you can kind of look at it. Uh, you know, and this is more re relevant for sales and marketing, uh, your targeting, right? Is there particular types of people? Every seller has been in a situation where they feel like they just really meshed with the prospect. Like, Hey, it was just easy. Didn't feel like a lot of work. We got along well. Uh, and then there's the opposite where you're like, yeah, just wasn't really jiving. Right. And so, um, that's because of compatibility. Compatibility is a problem. So um, you see a lot of sales teams typically assign counts uh, based on geography, size, industry, all of these sort of things that matter not as much. But what about actually aligning your sales team with people that you know they're going to be compatible with? So not taking away those other things, but adding an extra layer of having sellers deal with people that they're compatible with on a personality level. Um, the second component there is being able to be a seller that can adapt to the way that your buyer wants to buy, because that's the level of personalization and customization that buyers are looking for today. If you want to stand out. 
Well, I think that's very true. We're all we're all looking for something that fits. There's so much noise. That's part of it, isn't it? We're looking at something that seems like it really is tailored to us. A lot of that is subconscious, of course. Um, is is this is is the capability there for this to even influence, like let's say, a different buyer's journey in terms of the marketing and support piece that goes along with selling? Yeah, I mean, there is because one thing about people, right? And and this is uh, using the power of AI to be more authentic to the people you're dealing with because uh, most sales motions are built around personas and this is the playbook and we're trying to get our buyers to come along this journey based on the sales playbook that has been built out. Um, But if we flip that upside down for a second and say, wait, we want to be more personalized. We want to be more human. We want to be more authentic. We want to be more customizable and adaptable to the way that people want to buy. Well, you can use the power of AI to give you information about these people. So then you can customize what that playbook looks like based on the buyer journey that's going to best suit that particular person based on their communication styles and preferences, based on the things that they care about most. A lot of sales teams are taught that, hey, you should go in and build rapport and small talk and pleasantries uh, are the way to build a winning connection. Well, and then you have people that say, hey, relationships don't matter. If you solve a problem, then they'll buy from you. And the reality is those two schools of thought are both wrong. Because the only thing that matters is who you're dealing with, whether you go with one approach versus the other. I think you make a really a real key point there because it, it's not all just one thing. Uh, and and if, if you're a, a really top sales professional, you probably are a little bit of a student of human personality. I would love to come into a sales conversation knowing more about the personality of my prospect. That sounds extremely powerful. So uh, what are some great tips, Colin, for an individual producer to immediately begin to leverage some of this stuff with or without buy-in from their leadership? Yeah. So, I mean, I think that, you know, reading personality is is challenging um, and it's as a seller, you're always going to default back to whatever your personality type is. So like a really good thing to do is to know yourself first, right? Like know what Hmm. your personality type is, know what your communication styles and preferences are, know how you would want to be sold to if you were a buyer, right? That's a really good place to start. And then you can study the other types a bit, and then you can start to pick up cues and things of, you know, are people a little bit more slower pace or are they more early adopter? Are they mo- more focused on like ROI and how I align with their goals? Or, or does it feel like relationships are more important to them? Um, read into their own communication, you know, how they write messages. Is it more, you know, buttoned up and proper? Um, or is it a little bit more relaxed and informal and more exciting? Um, so you can look for those sort of things and mirror uh, what it is that you're, you know, getting uh, from from your prospect, either via written, you know, communication or, you know, over in conversation over Zoom. Um, so you, once you know yourself first, then you can start to look for some of these things, and you can kind of mirror that. Well, I love it, and we're getting a lot of activity in our chat. I know we're going to continue on with some Q and A here very shortly. But Colin, you've got a really neat offer. Uh, I'd like to have you share with our audience now, if you would. Uh, tell us more about that. Yeah. So anybody who is interested in, you know, being able to understand the personality of their prospects and wants to be able to personalize the entire sales process from prospecting to closing, they can go to humantic.ai. They can download a free trial. Um, start with your own profile first, run it on some people that you know and some prospects um, and just follow the prompts there that coaches you uh, on how to deal with that particular personality type. Well, I love it. I think this has already been a, uh, a really, really helpful conversation. Uh, let's jump into Q&A, and I know there's others who may want to drop your questions in. Uh, go for it. We are going to get into this even further. So right out of the gate, uh, one question that we were asked here on uh, just a moment ago was, let's see here, let me find it, from Amy. How can we learn to be a little more intentional with this, Amy asks, in terms of you know, all the personality types using technology like Humantic? Yeah. I mean, I think that to be intentional about using it, um, you know, I I think it starts with not 
trying to like automate this process too much, right? I think that's where a lot of people, you know, get sort of get into trouble is like looking for that silver bullet of how can I leverage technology to accelerate what I could do so that I can work less. And so it starts with really having a good foundation and process built around what it is you want to do. And then technology can, you know, add fuel to that rather than trying to use technology to solve a problem. I think that's where a lot of people, you know, some intentionality around like actually, you know, having a good sound process around it um, and then leveraging technology to accelerate it rather than relying on technology to solve a problem. Yeah, I love that. I think that makes that makes a lot of sense. Um, <clears throat> so somebody earlier, I'm gonna find this one here too. Uh, thought that we were wearing out here, Tree. With all due respect, I'm gonna put yours up here. Uh, I think we're gonna respectfully disagree with you, but we're glad that you're on the show. You think we've been abusing the definition of AI? Um, maybe we have. Maybe we haven't. I don't know. I quickly Googled it. it says that the uh, definition is uh, the development of computer systems that can perform tasks normally requiring human intelligence such as visual perception, speech rec recognition, decision-making, and translation between languages. Um, does this all fit, or are we going a little far afield? Is the definition getting too flexed? What do you think about that? I think that you know we're talking in, about it in a very general layman's terms, right? Uh, neither one of us claim to be, you know, AI, uh, you know, scientists or <laughs> experts here, right? I mean, uh, yeah. we're not data scientists. We're not, uh, you know, trained um, AI experts, but we're talking about how people can use AI in a very practical sense in very layman's terms. Yeah. Uh, we'll let Tree follow up with, with another question here. What about B2C? We've been the conversation, the theme of the show is B2B, of course, but hey, what about B2C? Yeah, B2C, you see AI used a lot, like let's say e-commerce, right? A lot of AI being used in, you know, chat bots and things like that. Um, also, you know, uh, in, you know, the way that they market, there's a lot of AI technology around B2C marketing tools as well. Mm. I don't have a ton of experience with, with B2C, um, so I couldn't talk uh, too in, in depth about, you know, how B2C companies are leveraging the power of AI today. Yeah. Uh, Joshua asked a great question. You, you uh, alluded to this a bit earlier about using AI in social selling. Do you have some additional tips to share on that? Yeah. I mean, uh, so partially, right. Uh, a lot, there's a lot of AI tools that will complement LinkedIn, right? So there's tools that will, um, play, you know, work with, uh, LinkedIn, whether that's to write your content, whether that's to engage with people, whether that's to, um, use it as a sort of, uh, CRM, there's tons of tools that are using AI to plug into your LinkedIn to make social selling uh, easier for you. Uh, part, I think a lot of times, you know, social selling is this sort of really vague term that a lot of people just kind of throw around loosely, right? Social selling is not, you know, uh, using automation and, you know, uh, pitching in the DMs of your buyers. Like that is not social selling. That's social spamming. <laughs> um, so, you know, social selling <laughs> done right is using the platform to build relationships with people that you would maybe like to do business with, adding value to those relationships, bringing those relationships off the platform, um, also providing value on the platform through content. So there's a lot of AI tools around, you know, both of those sort of use cases of how you can do social selling right that's excellent. Michael asks an interesting question here too, and I think there's, there's some valid validity to this. Uh, what the buyer says they want, what they do in reality, and what generates the most long-term profits are usually very different. Uh, to, what, <clears throat> to what extent do you agree with Michael? And maybe you can riff on that just a bit. Uh, let me look at this question one more time. So what uh, what are bu what buyers say they want and what they do in reality uh, generates? Yes. So um, yeah, I mean, so if you're very, you're selling something that's very, say, consultative, right? Where like, you know, buyer thinks they want A, they really need B. Um, I think that, uh, you know, that is a, that is definitely a case, but using the power of AI, um, you can know very much. Um, the funny thing is, is sometimes people think that they are a certain way, um, but they're actually a different way. And AI doesn't have any bias in there. Right, because it's working off of data and not emotions, um, which you know humans have. So, uh, if I were to guess, like what the human says is accurate, or the AI, I think I'd go with the AI. Well, I, I definitely see the advantage there too, right? Because in human interactions, it's sometimes complicated by some issues, and uh, the data is the data. So, yeah, I like that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> 
Well, here's a question from Brent that's interesting, too. So a lot of the conversation, I think, here has been predicated that we have some sort of a list to work with, right? That, that this is some more, this, we're sort of working in our pipeline with AI, uh, mostly, I think, has been most of the conversation today. What about building that initial list uh, intentionally, I guess, is kind of what Brent is getting at here, right? Are there AI tools that can help me go out into the world, use my sales navigator? What are some complementary ways I could use tech in that setting to find the right people, create some inbound calls? Yeah, so I probably right overdid person. your question there, Brent. Sorry. <laughs> so Brent is saying right person, right message at the right time. So that is a combination. That's a combination of tools, right? So that could be like using an AI tool to build your list. Uh, that could be using an AI tool to give you uh, buyer intent data. Um, and then that could be using AI to personalize the message based on all the data that you got from the other AI tools, which could be uh, technographics and seniority and uh, any other personal information that was found online, plus personality type. So you write the messaging in a way that most resonates with them. Um, so like the perfect secret sauce there, uh, Brent is a combination of AI tools to get right person, right message, right time. Yeah, you're on mute, you're on mute. Not again. Uh, hopefully I'll be over this cold by next week. Sorry, everybody. Um, <laughs> uh, Galen asks a question that I, you know, it, it occurred to me earlier as well. I know attribution is difficult. And what we're talking about here is how do you know that that activity online is actually that individual you're chasing? Um, that's mm -hmm. true. And maybe you'd be <clears throat> sharing some secret sauce of your company here, but you know, I'm sure that is a challenge. What are your thoughts on, you know, how do you, how do you validate to somebody who is skeptical that this is, this is working? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll be the first one to say it. Like, AI is not perfect by any means, right? There's, it's come a long way uh, and it's gotten pretty darn good uh, and very accurate uh, in a lot of different use cases. Uh, so <clears throat> in the context there of the people, so <clears throat> we have, uh, we follow, follow a very, uh, so we use NLP and, and, and um, this model has been built over eight years and uh we make sure that we have enough data before we say this is the you know particular personality type of this person. So along with you know here is the personality type of this person, which there's 36 different variations of personality. Um, we also have what's called like a confidence score. So if it's 100, percent like we have enough data to be very um, <clears throat> confident that this is their type. But in some cases, you will see where it's like, hey, we're only 67 percent confident that this. This is accurate based on the amount of data that was available, um, you know, publicly on this person. <clears throat> so that's interesting. Thirty-six different types. I know Myers Briggs has sixteen. You guys have thirty-six. So that's uh, that's interesting how you break that down. Um, I've got a question that just occurred to me. I mean, how much does your work inter interact with some of the what better known personality profiles that are out there, such as DISC? I think you said DISC is one of them. Uh, is it pretty? Does it pretty closely lie with that, or have you guys ended up kind of with your own proprietary uh, modeling <clears throat> for that? Yeah. So uh, the Humantic personality modeling is built off of DISC. Uh, and ocean, which is also referred to as the big five. So mm -hmm. disc and ocean are, you know, personality models that are built in a lot of these assessment tools or other things. Um, <clears throat> so we use a combination of two personality uh, modeling there to uh, come up with the personality and have those variations of personality for people. Now, I, I, I have my own answer coming to mind for this one, but I'm going to put it up here anyway. LinkedIn user, uh, un, un, uh, unattributed, says AI has every bias because it's programmed. What's your answer to that? I mean, is that a real person or is it AI? I mean, LinkedIn user, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Hey, touche, right? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I mean... This could, yeah, be it, this could be a sentient AI who's already gotten skeptical <laughs> with life, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, that's a tough one there. I mean, I think that that uh, the AI modeling is built off of data. Uh, there's no emotion in there. Um, there's a lot of people don't trust the AI. They think AI is going to take over the world, uh, put us all out of jobs. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't know. Maybe those people are running around with tin tinfoil hats. I don't know. <laughs> Well, and the application, I think, is, is the heart of this question. If you're dealing with uh, curating content in a, in, a, in a platform where you're taking in news and other media, then that can definitely be a, an issue, right? You can actually tweak that thing, and I think that gets into political conversation. But 
that doesn't really pertain here. We're just trying to figure out what's a person like to buy, when, how often, and those kinds of things. And th that's just hard data pretty much, correct? Yeah. And I think, you know, we're really talking about a B2B use case here where it's operating off of data to help sellers make better decisions, whether that's list building, CRM task, conversational intelligence, revenue intelligence, people graphics, personality types. Like this is all data that's available publicly online. Um, or, you know, through, you know, however it's being accessed uh, to power salespeople to be more efficient. Um, is there AI built out there that's built to do things that are not good? Probably, probably like, I don't know, manipulate, you know, whatever, but it's not what this show's about. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Well, I don't know. This has been this has been a fantastic conversation, and it, it it feels both like I'm full and I'm not done yet. So I really appreciate you coming and getting us started on a, a really great sort of entree in an area a lot of folks have been talking about. I don't know how much uh, really good information is out there right now, uh, but thanks for coming and bringing us some great data today, Colin. Fantastic to have you on the show today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It was a great conversation. Uh, time flew by and you are a uh, phenomenal host. Uh, so really appreciate you having me on the show. Thanks so much. I appreciate your kind words, Colin. And thank you to, our, to you, our listeners. Without you, it's not possible. Uh, we're going to be right back here at the same time, same station with the fantastic Victor Antonio talking about the key ways that buyers have shifted the way they want to buy so you can up your sales game in 2023. Come back and see us then. We'll see you.